Take a look. Exclusive. Let's get started. I know what happens in the Oval Office, and that's what scares me. I come at this from a very unique perspective. Not just having been a journalist, but also having worked for two different presidents. Hey, folks. Thanks a while. Pete was with the president all the time. Unlike his predecessor, Mr. Trump does not allow his staff photographer to capture photographs of life and work inside the White House. If you just stacked up the images of the Obama presidency and the Trump presidency, you would see the two stories of America in the starkest possible contrast. The job of the chief official White House photographer is to make authentic photographs. Photographs break down the idea that these people are somehow different from us. I've got an idea for another picture. <laughs> Did you get that piece? Yeah. The first time that we went to the UN, he and Reggie Love played basketball. At one point, President Obama blocks Reggie's shot. And he goes, Did you get that block? And the history has been written. When Barack Obama was elected, I could see what he meant to the African American community. This five year old kid asked Obama, Is my haircut just like yours? President Obama bent over and let that kid touch his head and his hand. That image stands for how kids will see themselves differently forever. I thought, who is this man? How does he deal with crisis? Leadership, character, and empathy. Don't you wish we had that now? When I first met Pete, his politics were not at all evident. Pete changed. He could no longer be this fly on the wall. The future! Pete Souza is getting attention online with replies to President Trump's tweets. I had to speak out. I knew how the job should be done. Pete felt the urgency to show what the office can be. This was a 911. Reagan and Obama respected the dignity of the office. The presidency is a serious job. And I was going to do everything I could to make sure people didn't forget that. Do you have a picture for every single thing that Donald Trump has lied about with Barack Obama? Pretty much. <laughs> We've got a behind the scenes exclusive. The job as the chief official White House photographer is to visually document the presidency for history. So when inauguration rolled around, I had in the back of my mind for the journey I was about to take, this thought, make authentic photographs. Think mood, emotion, context. Be ready for the fleeting moments, both big and small. My goal was to create the best photographic archive of a president that had ever been done. Lasting images for history. During my eight years as the chief official White House photographer for the Obama administration, I documented all the important moments of his presidency. The emotion, the tough decisions, the stressful times, the fun times, but also showing what he was like as a dad, as a husband, just as a human being. To me, that shows how the job of the president should be done. So the first day he came to me with his photo that he wanted to post on Instagram with the president sitting on the Resolute desk and the red curtains. And he wrote a caption, something like, I like the old curtains better. What did you think? And I said, you can't say that because he had spent eight years having no voice and no opinion of what was going on and suddenly Here's an opinion about drapes. And I said, you can't do that. Now, what I didn't tell you is I had just seen a picture of the redecorated Oval Office with these gold ornate curtains. And there was even a comment on that very first post from somebody that said, 
Pete is dropping shade with a comment on drapes. <laughs> and I have to admit, I had no idea what dropping shade meant. I knew what I was doing, I just didn't know it was called dropping or throwing shade. Every three months, we would go to Walter Reed and he would visit wounded warriors. I think it affected him emotionally. One time he went and we saw Corey Remsburg. He had gotten injured by an IED. The guy that he was on patrol with in Afghanistan was killed instantly. Corey was thrown into a ravine. He was underwater. Somehow he survived, not drowning. He spent months in a coma. He lost half his eyesight and the ability to control half his body. He had to relearn how to walk, talk, and eat. But here's the thing that really took me aback. President Obama had met Corey in uh, Normandy the previous June, and I had taken a picture of that encounter. And the picture, we had sent a copy to the family, and it was taped on the hospital wall. And I was looking at that picture and looking at Corey and saying to myself, this is the real cost of war. This is Jacob Philadelphia. At one point, Jacob's mom said, Mr. President, Jacob has a question for you. So Jacob's kind of like, Mr. President, my friends tell me that my haircut is just like yours. <laughs> and with that, uh, President Obama bent over, Jacob touched his head, click, I got one photo and it was gone. That image was what Barack Obama had said to us two years ago in an office in Chicago. That kid is literally can't even believe, even though he's seeing the President of the United States in the Oval Office until he can feel his hair, he doesn't truly believe that he's just like me. That single image stands for so much more. It stands for how kids will see themselves differently forever. But two, I think it tells you something about Barack Obama, that at the behest of a five-year-old kid, you would go ahead, bend over, and let that kid touch your head like that. 